Good morning. I have your energy stories for this, the fourth week of August 2021. And I don't really have any organizing themes here. The stories were really from all over the map. The first one was uh, Chinese wind turbine manufacturer Ming Yang announced they're launching the world's biggest turbine at 16 megawatts. It was recently certified by DNV and the China General Certification Center for Design, and it's scheduled for prototype installation by mid-2023 with commercial production in the following year. It's Typhoon rated, and its blades are 118 meters long. To put that in perspective, GE's Halyard 12X, now 13 megawatts, does 107 meters, and Siemens Gamesa 14 megawatt machine, sometimes extensible to 15, is 108 meters. So this one does them a little bit better. It has 46,000 uh, square meter swept space, which is a little bit over uh, six full soccer pitches, if you want to call them that. Switching gears to the United States, California is planning to add uh, several temporary natural gas-fired plants in an effort to ensure electricity supply this summer. California's Department of Water Resources is actually procuring five 30-megawatt gas generators to be installed at existing power plants and uh, to be operating by mid-September as they continue to run short of capacity and fear a shortage of capacity combined with heat, which, as we all know, can cause real havoc out there in California. Switching to EVs, Hyundai's first luxury EV under its Genesis brand is expected to incorporate a technology uh, late next year, original equipment wireless charging. The charging hardware on the Genesis GV60 will be supplied by Whitricity and only available, at least in the beginning, in South Korea. No word yet on U.S. markets, but Hyundai has said in the past that the technology could play a, quote, convenience role for EVs built on its platform that the GV60 shares with the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6. Staying with the EV space for a bit, battery swap company Ample just raised another $160 million in a Series C funding round to build out its charging battery swap infrastructure. It and Chinese company NIO, which has performed well over half a million swaps already, both think that charging swaps are the way to go instead of charging with a cable. So the goal here is to offer fast charging through these swaps, charging customers on a per mile basis. Whether the market eventually moves in this direction remains to be seen. We all know of the story of Better Place, we burned through three quarters of a billion dollars uh, before it went bankrupt. And uh, certainly there's a host of challenges, including warranties and liabilities and whether or not customers are going to give up their battery to someone else who keeps on swapping in new ones. Uh, but $160 million of new money seems to think there's a there there. Again, in completely different news, Swedish steelmaker SSAB just shipped to Volvo the world's first fossil-free steel from iron reduced using 100% hydrogen rather than traditional coke and coal that's used normally in the process. SSAB, iron mining company LKAB, and Swedish utility Vattenfall have collaborated in a consortium called Hybrid which aims to begin commercial deliveries by 2026. This could eventually be a significant tool for carbon reduction in the steel sector, which generates about 7 to 8% of total global CO2 emissions. In fact, SSEB says it can eventually cut the entire CO2 emissions of Sweden and Finland by 10 and 7% just by switching to the hybrid technology. Hydrogen steel projects are also being planned by major producers like Salzgitter in Germany and ArcelorMittal who are looking at pilot projects in Germany and Spain, respectively. One caution, making enough hydrogen to address just SSAB's current output would require about 15 terawatt hours of fossil-free juice to make that green hydrogen. And finally, our last story, multiple companies in the U.S. have recently seen solar components detained at ports following the Biden administration's ban on equipment using raw materials emanating from Hoshin Silicon based on concerns related to forced labor in China's Xinjiang region. Add to that a new effort from some U.S. solar manufacturers to extend the existing 201 import tariffs on incoming panels, not just to China, but also to Chinese tied factories in Vietnam, Malaysia, and Thailand, the U.S.'s biggest suppliers. And there's an emerging risk of the solar market that's worth watching. Well, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again next week.